Well, someone's not winning Mother of the Year, ever. I'm reviewing Run. Hey, Twisted People, it's your Twisted Woman here, Chauncey K. Robinson, and today I am doing a spoiler-free review of the movie Run. Run is a 2020 American horror thriller film directed by Anish Chiganti. The story deals with a homeschooled teenager who begins to suspect her mother is keeping a dark secret from her. Run is definitely a mixture of the movie Misery, based off of the Stephen King novel of the same name, Misery, meets Mommy Dearest, if you've ever seen those two films, which it kind of brings in this idea of someone being held kind of against their will by someone and also that's kind of what deals with in misery and has some home you know some moments of that but also the idea of a mother who is just like not a good mom in like the most extreme kind of way and that kind of comes together for those who don't know those references uh I felt like this movie dealt with the idea of a woman who basically wants to hold on to her daughter in the most extreme way. Her daughter who happens to be wheelchair bound. Yeah, it goes from there. You would think like this, you know, even describing it that way, you wouldn't even think you could kind of make a thriller off of that, but there have been real actual stories of situations like this. So you have this this film that kind of plays on that, right? You know, there was the a uh, recent true story that happened a couple years ago of a mother who was basically lying to everyone that her that her daughter had cancer and was you know bound to a wheelchair when in reality the daughter was not that sick and eventually i think the daughter like killed the mother in real life so i mean sometimes truth is stranger than fiction but i think run does a very good job of of telling a story in a very different way than what we've have heard about similar stories in the news or the mommy dearest movie or misery kind of because because it mixes those together so it gets right to the punchline when it comes to this movie it's only an hour and 30 minutes even an hour 29 minutes I think and I don't think it waits too long to get into the idea of this daughter who is suspicious of her mother and what's going on with the medicine she's taking all types of stuff that just doesn't add up it doesn't take too long to get into it it's a very straightforward film and one of the things you will appreciate as I mentioned Misery which is a Stephen King story and a very famous movie uh, adaptation called Misery is the throwbacks to a lot of Stephen King stuff. If you are a Stephen King fan, there are little things that games you can play in this movie where you can point out times when other Stephen King stories are referenced or you see them in the film, which is very cool, which shows that the director writer is a big fan of Stephen King. And why wouldn't you be uh, one of the masters of horror suspense? So uh, that's nice. The characters are solid. What you have here is a movie that very much depends on this dynamic between the mother and the daughter. They are the most fleshed out characters in this film. They are the main characters in these, this film. And they are the ones that you stay the most with in this film. So you kind of have to have a balance there, right? You have to have it so that you know, yes, the mother may or may not be dangerous, but you can't play it where like, oh, she's all an out and out villain, perhaps. And the same thing with the daughter. You can't make it so the daughter is just this, you know, unwilling victim. And, you know, that doesn't really give you much to work with for an hour and a half. So I think the way they play the characters of a little bit of grayness here and there, particularly with the mother, because of the young woman, the daughter, who is wheelchair bound and having that strength. And, you know, you do have a society that at times treats people who have disabilities as though they are helpless and things like that. And I think this movie will show that uh, that is not the case and that that characters such as this do need to be um, conveyed a lot more because there can be interesting stories. I mean, this one kind of centers around the disabilities that the character has, but you can have that where that's not the focus either. Uh, but I think this story kind of plays on this idea of how people tend to treat those with disabilities in this world and what you know, resilience can come from that. So I guess it does have a message. It just is an aspect of it as opposed to the heart of the film 
This film is intense. Like I said, it goes for an hour and a half and every hour and a half counts. You are watching with bated breath everything that happens, particularly with the daughter, Chloe, as she is trying to <laughs> find her way in different situations of trying to get help, of, of trying to figure out what's going on, all types of things. And each one is so intense where you don't know what's going to happen. And the form of this is done really well in the sense of how the sequence of events goes, where it, it, it does get into details. It's not, even though it's an hour and a half, it's not rushed. Like each scene is, there's steps to it. There's things that happen to the point where you're wondering what's going to happen. The director definitely takes you on a journey with all of the obstacles that Chloe has to deal with and really just keeping you on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen. So I think that is a really great setup in the way the film is structured. The biggest pro for me with this film is the acting. Like I said, Sarah Paulson is amazing. Uh, Kiara Allen, who plays the daughter, Chloe, is also really great because you're with her for a majority of the film and she carries it. She truly does. And the dynamic that, that they have, Sarah and Kiara, really, really works. And it it is dynamic. And that's probably the highlight of this film and the directing. I feel like that's a secondary highlight. Got to give big ups because the way this is filmed, it keeps you on the edge of your seat. But those are the two main pros when it comes to this film. My biggest con, you probably won't have to worry about this, is the ending. I thought the very, very end was a little cheesy the way it ended, uh, but it's very minor. I think this film... All the other things work and the the very very end like the last minute is so so the trigger warnings for this film are drug abuse and gaslighting the emotional carnage that you may have to deal with when watching this film or if you choose to watch this film is if you've ever dealt with a family relationship or a parental relationship where that person was manipulative abusive in some kind of way mental physical, emotional, and what that may do for you. I mean, this movie is to the extreme, but you know, like I said, sometimes truth is stranger than fiction. And so if that's something you might feel uncomfortable about or, you know, dealing with, this may make you feel a little uncomfortable watching a movie about a very overbearing parent that may or may not turn diddly. My final grade for Run is an A. Okay, Twisted People, so that is my spoiler-free review of the movie Run. Let me know if you plan on watching Run. Let me know if some of the, you know, content is something that kind of, you're kind of like, nah, I'm good on that. And let me know what your thoughts are when you do see it about some of the Stephen King references. If you can name them all that are in there, let me know. Comment down below. And also, be sure to subscribe so that you are the first to know when I post my videos. Thanks for watching. Let's get creepy together.